Um, Wireless or something? Oh, okay. Peter. Okay. Okay. This is for you. If you need a water, let me know. Mm -hmm. Get another hand for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Ronnie was a cat. Oh, he always gets sad about the cats. That's the one. The one thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're my family. They were my family. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, anything else? Yeah, I love what you guys did. And, uh, I love the people. <laughs> and it just, just uh, emotional part there. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I love you all. Um, I want to point out there are some great people here uh, that worked on the film. Uh, I see Dave Shaliel, stand up Dave. He yeah. did all the environmental cinematography. Uh, and we made him sit on the stairs, I guess. We made him sit on the stairs, I guess. Uh, Tristan Hansen, our co producer, is here. Tristan, could you stand up? Where is Tristan? There's Tristan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Josh, Josh Abrams, the composer of the great music. Josh, could you stand up? So great. Um, and you know, uh, Nora Gully. Nora Gully back there. Nora is our post-production supervisor. Uh, and uh, we also have some of the people from the film here, including Dan and Diane McKern. Could you guys just stand up for a minute? Dan and Diane. Oh, come on. Olga, Olga uh, Brisano is here. Olga, right there she here. is. Olga. All right. Uh, Gordon Quinn from Park Temple. Gordon Quinn, our executive producer. Gordon, who has been so helpful throughout this. Uh, and so many people from Cartem Quinn are here who have been really helpful to yeah, us. And, and a lot of friends of Peter's. Yeah. A lot of friends of Peter's. Like John, who yeah. we filmed with. John Sepperich. John yeah. and that kid, Zager. A kid, uh, we're together at the Chicago Library. Wow. We're together at Sports History. I haven't seen him. But Tim Horsberg. Hey, Tim. <laughs> so, um, thank you guys. Um, should we take questions, Peter? Whatever Everybody? you wish. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions? Not about the cats. Not about the cats. <laughs> non-cat related, but questions. Any non non -cat related Dog questions. Non-cat related questions. Pringles questions, maybe. But, uh, um, Pringles. You know, Pringles should be our sponsor because we. <laughs> so long, does anyone have a connection to Pringles? So. Pringles and pierogies. That was, that was my life. Pringles and pierogies. That was my life. Um, the sequel. Yes. Pete, I beat you on the cats. You, oh, and, how many you got more cats than Peter? Right, the cat record. No questions. <laughs> I beat you on the cats. I'll, I'll I'll bring you over sometime and you can see my babies. Yeah, Ted uh, has some cats. To, I remember going to his house one day. Uh, he doesn't eat meat, right? You know, he's still correct. You know, he's a vegetarian or something, and uh, it's all it's get. He was feeding carrots to uh, a dog, I remember, right? <laughs> I had vegan dogs. Yeah, even like. dogs were vegetarians. The dogs were vegans. <laughs> well, I got I to gotta show the audience a shirt that Ted's I have. Ted's got a cool shirt on. Say uh, hello yes, to my little yes. friend. <laughs> He, he was right editor of the sports section of the library. I worked in East Chicago Library. Cool. We yeah. put a uh, exhibit together on various ethnic and non-ethnic histories of East Chicago, and this man's recollection of uh, <laughs> Manoush is not yeah. hair splitting enough. He every high school and lower f football tackle score this that from decades earlier. You didn't have to call the Hammond Times. He had it all up here. <laughs> we created a tremendous history of East Chicago sports, in no small part because of Pete's recollections. And I paid him a quarter to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter, your, your scrapbooks are not just a history of your life. They're also a history of East Chicago, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, coming back to Ted, uh, I wrote the history of East Chicago awesome. sports, one of my books. And people still are interested in the history of East Chicago, and I had them. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. yeah. I'm living with uh, the wonderful people at the the uh, uh, Victory Center in Kansas City now. 
This lady here, stand up for a second. Yay, stand up. <laughs> Ned, Nedra is uh, the one who saw me at the nursing home, got me out of the nursing home. And if it was for her, I would be where I'm at now. Right. And her husband we, here, Bill. Bill. I'm, 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 I'm teaching everything. a choir now. By the way, I, I can use singers or dancers. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting on the Back to the Calum Region Talent Club type thing. Uh, it's called uh, the uh, Victory Center Sings Broadway Melodies. I'm looking for anybody who can sing or dance or be in a costume. And I just get in contact with the Columbia College person. All right. And we want to get costumes for the people. Uh, it's going to be the last week of April. We have 15 weeks to rehearse the choir. And the choir members are, believe it or not, 80s and 90s years old. So, Peter, what, what you're saying is you're not in the same place you were at the end of the film, right? Yeah, I'm, right now I'm in the Center, a wonderful place. It's in uh, Calumet City. Right, you've lived in a couple places since the... Oh, uh, yeah. Two? Two, three? Since I got out of the ho uh, house. Yeah, uh, two. two no, four places. Four? Right, four. Including including uh, the, the hotel. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Hannon uh, Aldrey Center. Including Gary. You guys forgot the one in right. Gary. Right. And uh, then the St. No, Anthony's been here. I mean, there, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I've been running around every single out of my wonderful home. <laughs> He's yeah. very happy. If we did a sequel, I'm sure you would be love, the next person who's passed off that and, helps Peter. And, uh, it's the good and the bad. Uh, should have been the good, bad, and the ugly. And, and the Any questions, hands, anything? Yes. Yeah, what have you been painting? Oh, I'm working right now, believe it or not, in Dallas Quest. Dallas Quest is an artist I admire. Uh, Caravaggio, I was talking to some people, Caravaggio, believe it or not, worked with Rembrandt, showed him the Rembrandt, how to bring light, here again from the movie, how to bring light from the outside into the paintings. I love this kind of stuff. Contrast, light, and dark. And I'm working on, uh, on that one. It's, it's uh, Venus looking in the mirror. Dallas Quest is one of my favorite artists. Caravaggio and uh, Rembrandt and uh, quite a few others. But uh, those were the main ones in my life. So it's like a, a replica? Like a, you're, you're trying to copy the technique? Yeah. I love that light and dark that Dallas Quest put in. And Caravaggio did one of Jesus, which I, I would try. And you're also putting together a book of facts, right? Yeah, now, uh, that's another thing I'm doing. Uh, the Lord doesn't want me to stop. I had a dream about three or four weeks ago, and I saw in the dream, do more. Don't be, don't be good. Yeah, get it again. Do more. I'm 83 years old. And, <laughs> and uh, I, I saw choir, and thanks to an idea that uh, I ended up, now I'm teaching the choir. I have 18 residents, and I'm at about about a half of the no, some of them are younger now. They're they're coming in from outside. Anybody can come to the choir. I need instrumentalist. I got there are my talent club days. Yeah. My talent club days seem to be coming back. That's right. Do more. I do get, more. I got a accordionist coming for for me, a guitarist and a keyboard player and a nice choir. Anybody can sing that you know. Okay. All right. I'm sure it's more. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know if I'm comfortable with it, but I've always felt like if you're putting someone in yeah, front of uh, the camera... Ironically, <laughs> <laughs> ironically uh, in, in 20, 2005, I had written a, a, a book, it's almost there, it's the part of the book, and on the last, or the second to the last page, I said, I hope this book becomes published. No, no, no. And it's something. Uh, he's talking about. To, yeah, you're no, talking no, about when, the when did Dan's family and become a part of the filmmaking process? 
Which day? Sorry. No, this this one. Yeah, 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 that that, that two oh five. Oh, right. no, well, yeah. Well, that's when Peter. Yeah, I think that what Peter, Joey, uh, Peter, My just name thought, Peter, Peter, <laughs> Peter, what was your name? Peter, Peter, Peter thought you were asking about how he started this, and it's true that like Peter was the one who really almost sort of saw someone coming in to his yeah, life. That's what I would refer to. I but the more that I, I think yeah. that we worked with Peter and, you know, put Peter under a certain kind of scrutiny, the more that I became sort of interested in seeing, you know, what the connections are, or the motivations were to continue to work with someone. And I sort of looked deeper inside to figure out that I think my family situation had parallels. Um, and, you know, I often like to see films in which I, I understand what the motivations are uh, of the filmmaker that's making the film. I sometimes find it a little standoffish when I don't see the connections. And, you know, we set out to tell Peter's story and help him share his story with the world, but we became supporting characters in the story. So. In some ways, I think that it became inevitable because Peter was also isolated for us to be characters in the story that we were telling. It's not been comfortable for me at all, but I don't think it's comfortable for Peter, you know? So I'm always interested in seeing how both people can sort of expose themselves, you know, subject and filmmaker. Winnie Ezra Liu. Grandmother. All right, grandmother. <laughs> You're an amazing man, and you certainly are a very colorful person. Now, almost there. Are you, you feel you're there now? Uh, the last part. Oh. Do you feel you're there now? No. 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 In, fact, in fact, I threw Danny in the air, and when I die, I put on the gravestone, finally there. <laughs> 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 Any others? Yes. Uh, I gotta explain. I think I don't really know outsider art. I just know I lived outside. <laughs> but uh, is Dallas Quez is an outside artist? I don't think so. I'm doing and uh, and some of the real wonderful artists I admire. I wanted to do a little bit more to get back into what I want to do now. Uh, they had me doing three more paintings for people. Who sponsors the, the oh it. Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah we, we should make mention. Here's yeah. yeah, make some great that. Kickstarter paintings. For yeah, me. and a lot of people are here tonight as a Kickstarter reward. Yeah, right? yeah, so. we have some Kickstarter yeah. rewardees. So thank you for your support, Kickstarters. Um, any other questions? Maybe yes. Linda. It seemed as if the exhibits that we saw towards the end of the film had art of yours a little bit different than the first one at the end. To it because I think you called some of it derivative, but some of that showed up later. How did you feel about putting up? Did you choose the work on your own for what was exhibited in that second? Yeah, uh, should I tell them about the first, uh, the first opinions, the first opinions of what paintings would go on the exhibit were their decisions, and I decided, you know, I I loved some real people, and that uh, Vietnam woman was what I really wanted to do, and now I'm getting back to some of that, like say with Dallas Quest. So I, and I'm not stuck with any, any particular type of painting, portraits or sceneries, or still life. I do everything, and I want to do everything, and I want to learn, keep learning. Uh, the problem is, I have a 90-year-old body, but a 50-year-old mind. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's a bad combination. And uh, I try to do as much as I can while I still have a uh, life. And I said, I saw the dream about a month and a half ago, do more. So I'm not going to rest yet. Follow up. And in the talent shows that you're doing now, do you feel that anyone who comes to you, you can find a talent in them? or? Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody has creative talent. It just has to be developed. I believe that truly. Even sewing is a talent. Even even uh, um, and making food is a talent. Yes. Your uh, relationship with the filmmakers is a big part of the story. Yeah. I'm curious to know at what point in the filmmaking process did you begin to suggest things for the films? 
the last part. When, was, when did you suggest things to Dan and I to film? Uh, they suggested. <laughs> uh, we ended up, I, I started to say, in 2005, and the Brogy Fest, they were kind of amazed with this, and after we got acquainted, they, they really got going into it. You know, we were interested in my artwork and things I was doing, and uh, getting me out of the wonderful house I had. Did you Did you ever tell us, like, go oh, film this, don't film that? Uh, and hold, hold the microphone up. I, I don't remember, did they? Maybe that instant I had, I kind of had one of the film coming off, maybe, but I had, I had everything else. It was okay. No. Yeah. No. He was too busy to telling us to fix his house to tell us what to film. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, kind of. That house, <laughs> the house was fixed up by the way. The roof was fixed up, and new furnace was fixed up. It's just the interior that needs to be worked on. To say and I still own the house, but I don't know how to get. I don't get it. Actually, the people, right. The house is still boarded up. Yeah. Right? In East Chicago. Right. And the, the, the people that are going to be responsible for the house is going to be the church people. Oh. Tommy Asville and, and the Clintons. And those people are going to be helping taking care of the house. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Question. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, what originally brought you to the Brogy Fest? Brogies. <laughs> <laughs> I think the year we went, the, there, there was, they, were, they were rolling out the world's largest pierogi. <laughs> And, and they were the going Guinness for the Book World, yeah, they were going for the Guinness Book World Records for the largest <laughs> pierogi. I mean, I grew up eating pierogies. You know, my grandmother made pierogies. I'm Ukrainian and Polish, and so you know, pierogi fest is in Whiting. I, you know, you can actually bike there from here um, if you're a hardy biker. <laughs> not not this time of year. Last um, weekend of July. Last weekend of July. Every so year. you know, we just went there to sort of eat pierogies and meet Mr. Pierogi, and uh, you know, we met Peter. Yes. Um, uh, when I'm watching the movie, uh, I, I, you know, I think it's pretty obvious, but it's like it's all about redemption, not just for for Peter, but for I feel like everybody, for yeah. Aaron, for Dan, for everybody. I wonder how you guys feel about the the film and the process now, having it be done and watching it with like a home crowd and everything. Each of you. Oh, yeah. It's a surreal experience. Because it's yeah. so personal. I always say, like, watching yourself in a film is like, do you ever see the way a dog looks in a mirror? You know, it's like, uh, it's just a weird thing. Like, I mean, I always feel like that's how I feel. Like, whatever the face is that a dog has when it sees itself in a mirror. But, um, I mean, having a crowd like this here means everything. We worked for eight years on this film, so it is like, wow. I think we're kind of speechless. Um, it means so much. Uh, it means so much for Peter to be here, to have made it through. Uh, there were a lot of times we'd go to the house and we didn't know if we'd be knocking on the door if he'd still be alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but that's my answer, Aaron. You wanted each of us to answer it. You go next. Let me tell <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a couple people in that film are going to think that the policeman, Bill Pabe, is one of my closest friends. He also took me. Danny was the main guy you saw yeah, in the yeah, film. Yeah, where, where, where are you? Yeah, there's Dan. Dan. The there he is. Danny was. <laughs> Danny was the main guy from from the seventies on. Uh, really helped me. Danny and Diane, the whole family. Uh, they were the main people that helped me. But there were other people who came through. Uh, Paul Moreno, uh, you saw him briefly in the film. Uh, he also in truck off, but, but uh, what, what's it like for you to see yourself in the yeah, movie? Yeah, what's it like now? Uh, yeah, it's like uh, happiness and crying at the same time because I was a lot of things that were sad for me in the in, you know brought back some bad memories of my cat dying and the condition I lived in. I still like things to hang on to. I have a sports collection. Uh, uh, I still have clippings. Uh, East Coast Western. I got I got all kind of schools, uh, Hammond, uh, Gary, everything. I, I have a collection. Do you miss Do you miss being at the house? Still? I have, yeah, I have a hundred uh, clippings. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but do you miss, Do you want to go back to your house? No, I'm talking about my apartment now. At right. Berkeley. No, no, yeah. Aaron, what about you? What do you feel? Yeah, it, you know, it's an interesting thing. You know, as an as an editor, you know, you you look at things. I think in a really technical way, you know, you know where all the, how all the pieces are fitting together, so when I watch a film with an audience, honestly, it's like a real surreal experience, like it's, at, at least at the moment, it usually takes a couple years before it comes, becomes something like separate from the experience that's very immediate, Other so questions? that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yes, I, Ted. 
Um, yeah, I, I wanted to ask about um, the, the moment, because I think filmmaking is, is so laid bare in this process. And the moment when you realize that you probably would stop filming, um, I'm curious, and I know that that's a really hard question to answer um, due to the nature of it. It's almost filmmaking as a way of witnessing, in a way, and we see everything. But another way, it, it feels also like there's a, the camera is almost like a hose, and life is pouring out of it. And it sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, it, wait, wait, he's not done. Oh. <laughs> Do you mean like how do we know when the movie was over when we were stopping filming? Yeah, like I'm saying, it's very clear. The camera is stopped rolling, although there's still one here. Yeah. But when they stop, they get you miss that kind of camera. Well, yes. Did Did you hear what he said? Basically, part part of it. Yeah. So so it's sort of a two parter. Um, first part is like how did we know we were done filming, and then the second part was. Um, how did it feel to have us kind of pull back from filming? So we'll answer our part, and then we'll get. Uh, hold you, on one yeah, we'll take. So, yeah, I mean, we we kept filming for a while because I don't think we were totally sure. You know, like Peter left the home that you see him in there. We filmed the process of you having to give up Mariah, you know, his cat, in order to go to the next place. Yeah. We won't talk about that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we would, it, but we did a lot of screenings at Cartumquin, and that was extremely helpful because we were so deep in the process. We didn't always know exactly, you know, if it was over or not. And so, like, we asked people on this, like, survey sheet that we gave out at one of our last screenings, like, if there was a scene with this happening, would you want it, would you want it to see it? And, and people were like, no, no, that's okay. I think it is yeah. always <laughs> hard to stop, you know? Like, Peter has, had, you know, had at least two other major events so you know in that way it was hard but when you're filming for so long with someone you know it's just like anything I think you can reflect and start to see an arc and you know I kind of come to documentary through screenwriting and playwriting and so I think that I started to see near the end of the eight years like well Peter's going to get his cat you know and it felt like a really important moment you know at least in our film because it really represented to us that Peter was really willing to call a new place a home in a way by bringing you know by bringing his cat in so there were those signs and then when he had the art show we always wanted to show in a sense the difference between you know art done for a community and art that's sort of curated in a in a fancy gallery or something and so in a way i think the show that you had at the library at the end was the show you really wanted, which was in your community, and, and, and so and I think of you a lot of the pictures, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you chose the <laughs> pictures. Were, so wait, um, we also just wanted to ask you, how has it been with us not filming all the time? That's what I think. The question was, how has it been with us not yeah. around all the time? I still eat, uh, <laughs> and just uh, you wash and be with bread and tea. He still eats. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> you know. Should we have maybe yeah. like one more question? Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, right. we gotta we gotta wrap it up. Okay, two more questions. I see two hands. Yeah. Yes. So, um, at one point in the film, early on, one of the more powerful moments for me is Peter. Okay. He's saying that suffering is natural. Better ear than I am. Yeah, I can hear you at all. It was almost a redemptive thing for him to say that, that suffering made him stronger. And I wonder now, having gone through everything that he's gone through, uh, being where he is today, what are his feelings about suffering are now? So, Peter, I guess basically it's like you, you say in the film that, you know, I'm going to suffer for the rest of my life. I need to suffer. And so the question is, is now that you've been through all this and you see this, what are your feelings about suffering now? And put your mic up. To your yeah, what? So how do you feel about <laughs> suffering now? 
Okay. Uh, I still suffer, I, uh, but I don't suffer as much as I did then. I'm still in pain. I still have the uh, arthritis. I have a little bit of a cancer that I've got to take care of. I don't know whether that's serious or not. And uh, uh, not that I again took me out of my nursing home, but the nursing home kept my SSI. And we're working on trying to get that money back from, from the nursing home. And suffering but, goes on. Yeah, yeah. but it's <laughs> suffering not, not goes as, on. Not as painful. Not as bad. And my cat is uh, in a place near Valparaiso, per, uh, Mariah, my best She's cat. in a good place. Yeah. She's in a good place. One last question in the top back row. Yeah, I'm curious, what, uh, Peter, what do you hope people take away from hearing your Yeah, I heard part of that. What do what you, you hope, hope people, people what do you hope people take away from this film? That's the question. Peter. I understand you. you go. You put up put up the mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is working. Uh, pers perseverance, the main thing I think I have is going through the suffering and then coming out a little bit better, or, and then I go back and do it. At the beginning of the film, I talked about my life is like this. It really is. But now it's just like this. <laughs> all right. See, we all have this. <laughs> all right. I was going this way. <laughs> way deep and way high, you know. It's even. You've smoothed it out. Yeah, we messed up. I mean, uh, straightened out the, the bumps in the road a little bit better. Straightened out the bumps That's in the road. That's true. That's true with most of you, I think. You go through all the things, you persevere, and you're resilient, and you go through life with the suffering, and go on with your life. I think Good that's a great end. way to end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I think there are still a few tickets left for tomorrow. I think around 20 or 30 tickets. So tell, you know, your, tell your friends. Like us on Facebook. Uh, we're just beginning the process of sharing this film. Um, we're going to be traveling to festivals, and so if you like the film and want to support our distribution, feel free to go to our uh, Cartemquin webpage as well. Great. One last plug. Yeah. Um, Thanks, and everybody. thank you so much thank for you. coming tonight, all right? Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Real Santa's love. Is that great? Damn, that wasn't the second time. Oh, no way! Okay. I wasn't, right?